Climate change is being blamed for negative impacts on the world's mountain and glacier regions, and the UN's weather agency made the announcement during the High Mountain Summit in Geneva. According to these scientists, changes could have a major impact on the world's water systems. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has called the debate over the existence of climate change alarming. In his new book, Letters from an Astrophysicist, Tyson shares his cosmic perspective on questions he's fielded on science, faith, and life itself, and he joins us now via Skype. Dr. Tyson, what a Hi. pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. What made you want to write this book? It's a collection of letters that people actually sent you, their questions. I mean, what do folks mostly want to know from you? Well, I would say over the decades, half of the questions were simple questions of science. And so I have staff who have that expertise. I'm not uniquely qualified to answer a science question. Plenty of people can do that. But when they read something that I wrote or saw a video that I appeared in, that may have stimulated some uh, angst within them, mm -hmm. I get a letter, <laughs> okay? And these are people who have questions. For example, people who may have been raised in a particular um, a, a, a tradi faith tradition, and then they learn science later, and then they see there's conflict. There are people who have seen lights in the sky and want to understand what they might have been. There's a question in there about Bigfoot, um, people, <laughs> people are are curious about things that they don't understand. Well, not everyone, unfortunately, but those who are, and who took the energy to write to me, I took the energy to write back, and so that's this is a collection of some of the deepest, most introspective challenges that people have had in my attempt to 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 answer them, from my posture uh, as. as having a cosmic perspective on the world. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Tyson, just explain some, what are some of the deepest angst that, that people have had? What is the general theme of these letters that ignites the most angst in some of the people who will watch some of your talks or, or, or your series? I've got one. So uh, about, about 101 letters in the book, uh, about 10% of them come from people who have strong religious traditions. Mm -hmm. And one of them, uh, one of the people conflated two notions, he said, Dr. Tyson, is there any way you could feel the 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 the, the longing in the in the words? Is there any way scientists can decide that the universe is six thousand years old? Or he's coming from a biblical Genesis yeah. where that's sure. kind of you 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 lay out the begats, you don't get more than ten thousand years out of that, mm -hmm. and that's pushing it. So he says because if we can't then I would feel very lonely in a world, in a universe that didn't have God. Mm. And I think, whoa, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a lot. so yeah. can we unpack this, please? There yeah. are plenty of enlightened religious people who don't view the Bible as a science textbook. They view it as a source of inspiration, a source of, of wisdom, but not as a literal place to get your your, 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 your lines of scientific understanding of the universe. And so I found myself trying to sort of talk them off the ledge, mm -hmm. not, not literally, but just emotionally talk them off the ledge and say he doesn't have to disavow his faith unless he requires of himself to think everything in the Bible is the literal word of God and is unerring. Then you have a problem. Mm. Yeah. You said you answered these and that you come at life from a cosmic perspective. What does that mean and how do you think that impacts the way that you deal sort of normal everyday life? It's a great question. I think many people, <clears throat> I've come to learn that most people have never even met a scientist in their life, much less be able to claim one as their friend. And so here I am, you know, I'm on the internet, I got TV show, you know, books, and I think they're people who kind of think of me as their friend. So they come to me with questions that they know they're going to get a slightly different kind of answer to it because I have scientific training. And when you're trained as a scientist, information and data and knowledge all, all come together a little differently than it does for others. In the end, we're all after some kind of objective truth. And the methods and tools of science are exquisitely tuned to obtain just that at the end of the day. So all of these people, with all of where they're coming from, they're coming to me saying, what can a scientist, what will a scientist say about my dilemma? Where will knowledge of the universe, where Earth is a ball orbiting the sun, adrift in space, when you see Earth from space, you see oceans and land 
in clouds. You don't see color-coded countries, such as what's on the globe in your social studies class. Mm -hmm. So a cosmic perspective ha has a way of lifting you above what might otherwise seem like intractable life problems and have you take another look at it and say, no, that problem is not all that big. Or my hatred I have for someone who lives across this line in the sand that's been artificially drawn is a completely artificial construct. Right. And it's that kind of perspective that can actually transform a person's life. Hmm. Oh, that's very interesting. I mean, how would you say that there's a cosmic perspective of to make of what was happening today? Cosmically, what should people care about in the news today? This is a political <laughs> show, after all. <laughs> all right. How about this? Uh, what the Internet has done yeah. to us all is the Internet, in addition to what is good about it, what it has done is it, it has enabled all of us to tribalize as never before. Our tribalizing um, uh, uh, behaviors historically were, are you, are you the same skin color? Are you the same, do you worship the same God in the sky? Do you live on this side of the line rather than that side? That's where wars were fought over the centuries and over the millennia. We have extra ways to divide ourselves now because the internet makes it easy. If you have some idea that's a little bit crazy, but you don't think it's crazy, you type it in and up comes everybody else who shares that exact idea. And so, so the tribalization now can cut through the population in other ways that have not been traditional. Mm -hmm. That's why you have the rise of flat earthers, right? right? <laughs> They've all found each other. You should be the lone person at the party to say this person, this, 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 who, I, you know, now they all have banded together. And yeah. so I don't, I don't think this is good as a general <laughs> fact because it's appealing to some base sort of caveman tribal uh, element that we know is still in us. Yeah. And yeah. the point of civilization is to tamp down what might be primal urges and so that we all get along because we all share the same planet. Mm -hmm. Well, and ironically, I mean, at the advent of all these social media platforms in particular, the thought was, oh, this is going to make us understand our differences. Yeah, right. It's going to make us, you know, <laughs> see more in common. Instead, we've just been like, nope, I found my people. Here's where I'm staying. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you, you, I know at least one of these letters has to do with, you know, processing your own mortality from someone who um, had six months to live. What do you tell that person? Yeah, that person, uh, just before I give a fuller answer to that. Let me just say, when someone writes to me, uh, there is an implicit contract that I accept, which is I want to learn where you're standing, on what landscape you're writing from, and what is your brain wiring. And I'll try to deduce that from your words, your sentences, the length of your letter, so that when I reply, I'm not just going to lecture to you. I want to come back with a way that my information and insights can intersect your receptors for learning. And that's the contract that's in this book that I hmm. think I have brought to bear on every communication with everyone there. So I, I'm written, there's a man who says, I just learned I've got six months. And I'm writing to you and some other people who hmm. have made my retired life that much more enlightening. He, he, cons he was a big consumer of my videos hmm. and books. And it's clearly he was a lifelong learner. And he said, I don't want anybody crying for me. I lived a full life. I just wanted to say thank you. And it was like, mm, I, wow. I, I almost can't read that without me welling up a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, yeah. just, damn, this guy's strong. And so what do you say? So I, I, I say, you know, I, I don't, so I'm not going to weep. He doesn't want me to weep. But I'm going to say, look, not everyone lives as long as you do. Not everyone is, is curious. Not everyone learns as much about the world after they leave school. That's what the lifelong learning comes in. We all know people who on the last day of school, what do they do? They toss their papers in the air and say, school's out. I don't have to attend school anymore. It's like, what? You're mm -hmm. glad you don't have to learn anymore? Something's wrong in that school if you are glad you never have to return. Right. So a few people, such as this gentleman with six months to live, he led a full life. So I just, so I just shared with him some insights about how good it is to lead a full life, again, coming from a cosmic perspective. And um, so, so that's the kind of thing that um, where people are in these unique spots in their own life where they come to me. 
I have a cousin who wrote to me who hmm. her dead father was on a slab in the funeral home and she had a two-way conversation with him. Huh. And at the end of the letter, she says, this is clearly sounds crazy, but what do you think happened? Mm -hmm. Now, rather than say, oh, you're just crazy. No, it's like either she had an acoustic hallucination, which mm -hmm. can happen. All of your senses can be hallucinated. You can have the sensation that ants are crawling on your skin, right. Right. a well-known medical phenomenon, but there are no ants there. You can have visual uh, hallucinations. You can have acoustic hallucinations. I said, either that or you're actually communicating with the other side. So I told her, here's a list of questions you should ask instead of the ones you did ask. <laughs> <laughs> here's some other ideas. Well, this let, let me ask you this. Science experiment. Yeah. How okay. do you, Dr. Tyson, how do you not feel that your life is meaningless and insignificant when you have in your mind, when you can hold like the vastness of the universe and how tiny we truly are, how do you reconcile that with feeling like your life is rich and full of meaning? That's another great question. So one of the, so the cosmic perspective has two sides to it. One of them is you're not as big as you thought. You're not, you don't, you, <laughs> you're tiny in time, in space. It, all of that's true, all right? But there's something else that's true. And I think it's a more profound truth than learning how small we are on these scales. It's realizing, among other facts, that the very molecules, atoms of your body that comprise the molecules, were forged in the centers of stars. Mm -hmm. Distant stars in our galaxy that exploded scatter that enrichment across the galaxy. And these are the ingredients out of which you make planets, out of which you make life, the organic chemistry that enables life was forged in the centers of stars. So when you look up next in the night sky, don't think how small you are. Think to yourself, I am in this universe deep in this universe, and you know something else? The universe is deep within me, mm. alive within me. As Carl Sagan once said, uh, life, as we know, human life, is a way for the universe to know itself. Mm. And when you have that kind of perspective, then you realize you belong to this great unfolding of cosmic events. And you also learn, because we're trained that to be special, you have to be different from other people. But what the cosmic perspective tells us is that you can be special by being the same. And what do I mean by that? Your, your physiology is the same as everybody else's. You share DNA. There's a commonality to you and other humans and to all life on Earth. And wait a minute, if you have common DNA to all life on Earth, plants, bugs, uh, trees, or everything, that means that we are all in this together. The ecosystem is supporting us all. And the moment you think of us as separate, as distinct from everything else, you have engineered into the future your own demise mm. because you need the rest of what Earth is because we all evolved on the same planet. Yeah. These are cosmic perspectives. And when I look up at night, I feel large, not small. Well, thank mm. you. that was an incredible answer. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. You, sir. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Th thanks for your interest. Absolutely. We'll have more Rising for you right after this.